Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the video. Welcome. Whale. 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 Whale come. Whale. A whale's come. The come of a whale. Do whales come? If whales come, that's got to be like a mass, like a buckets. Buckets of whale come. If they do. How big is their penis? Okay. Dell was attacking me and I had to fight him off. And I had to do it because it was following me around my whole day. And look all the pain I've been through. But it's over because I ended it today. And you can believe that. But you guys need to understand me that I am not crazy. <sighs> The story behind this bizarre episode is an act so unbelievably gruesome. It's what horror movies are made of. He's Before not crazy one, though. You're about to view one of our most disturbing cases. Yet. All right, guys, get your pants Read us together. Again, 911, get your, your pants on. Hi, I'm at the river. Uh, Read us down to fire department. Yes, sir. I picked up a guy who was really seemed really confused. But, uh, I let him out, and he started attacking other vehicles. And are you? Is he still being combative, sir? Well, he, I don't. Why does this girl sound like a child? Is that just me? I think he's very dangerous. His yeah, I have heard about Elden Ring's new Coliseum update. Really awesome. I'm excited. I, I can't wait to open Elden Ring back up again. I haven't played in forever. Perception of the man couldn't be more wrong. A series of surreal events are about to unfold right before your eyes in the following footage that has never been seen before. An unspeakably brutal act will be uncovered and the reputation of a once adored historic area will be forever tarnished. At this very moment, a peculiar but seemingly unrelated situation is unfolding about 10 miles from the fire department. A deputy has been dispatched to the vast Co Ranch located in Glencoe, New Mexico, to perform a welfare Glencoe. check. And something isn't right. The scenic area situated in the Riodoso River Valley has an eerie feel on this evening. And for good reason, we'll come to learn. There's no response at the main residence. Is the individual supposed to be uh, 97 here on scene? Well, yes, sir. That's where she was when um, he was speaking with her. 97 uh, years she old? She does not live at the main house. She's going to live in a mobile home on the east side of the property. <laughs> Wait. Be warned, lots of rivers of blood and wave of gold spammers. Huh? Wait, is there blood? Is there a lot of blood in this video? I mean, it's on YouTube, so I should be fine, right? Right? <laughs> Sheriff's Department! <laughs> Receive no knock, answer to the knock here either. Sheriff's Department. Oh, Elden Ring. Okay, I was Ooh. like, wait. After a thorough search that, of the exterior. Okay, oh, rivers of blood and wave of gold. Okay, like, all right. I was so confused. I thought you were talking about the video. I was like, we're, wait, waves of gold? What? What's what? You're talking about the ability. Okay. I was like, what the? All right. The deputy has found no trace of the woman in question and caretaker of the ranch, Mary Ann Morehouse. It's as if she's fallen off the face of the earth. Front door of the residence is open, screen door, but nobody's answering from inside. Is there another available deputy? Send me another unit. I need to make entry. The responding deputy can do nothing but wait for another unit to arrive. That's gotta be creepy. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, police locate the subject <clears throat> of the 911 call and cautiously approach him. What happened to you? I had a really bad day. I just need something to drink, please. Drink? Yes, sir. Like water? Yes. Okay. I've been through a lot. I lost my dog. I went into a river. I've been lost all day. I need some help. Okay. We're here to help you. Okay, thank you. But you're acting a little incoherent, yes, sir. Okay. Here's an example of how the context of a situation matters when it comes to body language analysis. The man frequently crosses his arms, which could be interpreted as him being closed off or trying to self-soothe. However, 
A few moments later, the police you, officer Astrid. motions for him to come with them to get you in where it's a little warmer. With that additional information, the crossed arms can likely be explained away simply by the man being cold. This is why it's important to look at the whole picture when considering what someone's body language means. After he's escorted into the police station, officers learn the identity of the agitated man. Working in the ER, you meet people Morning. like this every single day. God, I can imagine. After a short while of observing Andrew's overwhelmingly strange behavior and apparently chalking it up to drug abuse or psychological issues, officers guide him to an ambulance outside the police station. It's going to take more than a leash to control Andrew, considering the state he's in. Deputies will soon witness how Andrew's strange behavior can abruptly shift to erratic and violent, and in the blink of an eye. Andrew is transported to Lincoln County the Memorial fuck? Hospital in hopes that emergency medical intervention will provide him with the help he so clearly needs. Unfortunately, while here, things will escalate from this bizarre situation to downright insane. Uh, After the uh, responding uh, deputy uh. has waited at the ranch for nearly an hour, Unable to proceed any further until backup has arrived, an additional deputy is finally available to assist. They waste no time in resuming the search. The situation is alarmingly suspicious. We had a stabbing victim come in and they brought the guy who did it in the hospital too. We went on shutdown afterwards. What the fuck? It's over there, Charlie. We gotta drive oh my God, the negative filter. It's just getting man. real. It's getting the real. door is open and the bedroom window's <laughs> open and the TV's on and there ain't no sound in there and there's three cars. Said so there's somebody here and cut off. Shit's weird. Yeah. Give me a bad vibe, man. Both deputies carefully approach. Bro. The property. That, that that is a line out of a horror movie. Not gonna lie, dude. I got bad vibes about this place, man. And prepare themselves for entry as they anticipate that they may happen upon something terrible. There are just too many warning signs to believe there could be a plausible explanation for the woman's absence. How oh, dog goes. Sheriff's office. We're going to come in and check on you. Sheriff's office. We're going to see it's a dead body, strange. Chad. Strange. It's real strange, man. But there's no one to be found inside the premises. In fact, nothing even appears to be out of place, and there's no sign that any type of struggle has occurred. Things just aren't adding up. Thus, What's happening here? Though they don't yet know it, the deputies are on the threshold of unearthing something worse than they can imagine. Dude, you've been, you've been building up how terrible this is. I better be absolutely blown away by how disgusting and awful this is. <laughs> Like, it's just been funny. Every every single scene, it's like, they're about to see the worst event in the history of all humanity. They continue to search outside. And What's the picture the goes residence? negative. I don't know. What else you reckon? She was supposedly on the phone with the RP yeah. and says somebody's here. I mean, who walks off at a night like this? I thought we were going to go in there and find something bad. In just a matter of minutes, the deputy will receive a haunting confirmation that his instincts shouldn't be taken lightly. There's definitely something weird, but I don't know what it is. There's something strange. We're going to be out at the main residence now. There's something The RP sus? is kind of freaking out, saying, oh, there's definitely something wrong. I'm like, yeah, it's weird, but I don't know. Yeah, I better Let's be shook as fuck, man. See if we find another, any house, any other house. The deputies inspect the exterior of one more property, and in a split second, the situation has evolved from suspicious to unspeakably horrific. Hey, 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 hey! Down, we got somebody down! We got somebody down! The horrific truth of the discovery will be revealed during the interrogation of the disturbed Dude, suspect. Dude, you are teasing me so hard, bro. This. Suspect could still be on scene. The deputy is desperate for more backup at the scene. The urgency of the situation Where's is Ballin crystal we clear. Him? Okay, Charlie. Fly down She's so down. he can just be the hindsight guy. He's like Captain Hindsight. It, except he just documents everything that happens. 
Um, it looks like a she, elderly female. This motherfucker is still here. Anybody comes up on us is getting fucking smoked, dude. Yeah! Do it up. Yeah, fuck shit up. Let's go, boys! Is, settled in sleep. is that how cops talk? Yo, is, did we finally find the, the original cop? Did we find the one? The first American cop? <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, if anyone shows up, dude, they're getting destroyed. Yeah, fuck shit up. Let's go, bro. What the fuck? Yo, for real, for real, on a stat, we about to cap this loser, man. Sleeping. He was sedated upon his arrival at the hospital. A deputy has been assigned the task of watching over him and ensuring that only hospital staff and officers enter and exit the room. Not long into I mean, to be fair, they might just be hyping themselves up because they're scared. Shift. The deputy receives a call from another member of the sheriff's office who is stationed at the scene of the crime. Oh, yeah. Mooney and the just said the same thing I said, yeah. Request. Yes. I've got them in a bag. They're a pair of construction kind of boots. It's more like a curved tire tread than like a diamond pattern. I'll try to send one back to you. The deputy captures photos of the outsoles of Andrew's boots and fires them off right away. It seems the sheriff's office has surmised that the two occurrences are related. The question is, how? I, I think the, the guy at the house, the hospital, is the dude, and he had a freaking meltdown or something. Imagine if this fucker hitchhiked to the hospital. Imagine the guy that just gave a fucking dude like that a ride. You know, the sad part, Charlie, is this is a beautiful place. It was. The brutal crime dude, will are they reading off a script? Like, what is this dialogue? It actually sounds like they're bad actors. You know what I mean? Like, in, in a show where, like, they are given lines and they're just not good at acting. Man, this was a beautiful town. Well, it was. What? Dude, do people speak like this? Hope you had a good day. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like they're reenacting. It's weird. Taint the property, and law enforcement must get to the bottom of the dire situation before another life is lost. Somewhere around 1 a.m. marks the very stage where Andrew's odd behavior has taken a drastic turn. He has become extremely violent. Hey, talk. Go with Jason, please. Jason's the one hit. Anybody else did? No, just one shot. Somehow, a sudden struggle erupted when, out of nowhere, Andrew leaped from his hospital bed and attacked a deputy. Immediately, two more deputies rushed to assist. In the midst of all the chaos, a handgun was knocked out of one of the deputy's holsters. Andrew managed to grab How? the weapon before any of the other three could get their hands on it, and he fired a shot directly into the arm of one deputy. He pulled the trigger again, and by some... There were three cops! How did this man get away with that? Sort of miracle. The weapon failed to fire. Holy yeah, shit. Okay. All right. And you calm down, so. Yeah, okay. okay. I don't know what I'm doing there, but I can't figure it out. I know. Just and then you some medication. We're getting shackled. Okay, we're going to put him back in here on the bed. The doctor got to check him. You roll him over? Yep. My leg. Okay. Set up. You got anything to shackle? But not here. <laughs> Just one. We'll put one on this and one to the bed. All right. Okay. Remarkably, Andrew's episode continues into the morning, despite the sedatives he has been given. Man, you guys don't want to respond me. I do one little thing and... I'm sorry. Man, I, I said I'm sorry. Like, what? Oh, sorry that I sh tried to shoot an officer and kill him. I'm sorry. I said it. Why is it such a big deal? I don't understand. Sorry, I told you I was sorry. I can't move or anything. It sucks, dude. You guys, I will live a happy life. I promise I will be happy. I always wanted to be by myself somewhere. Hi, Andrew. Hi, yeah. I'm going to give you a shot in your leg, okay? It's the same medication I gave you earlier. Okay? Oh. Or do you want it in your Ooh. arm? It's going to be okay. We're trying to help I'm you. I'm gonna Andrew. be okay though. I'm gonna be okay. I have one stuff right now. I've had a drink in five days of eight worms. I'm going nuts because of this. And I know what it's all about now. I need to chill out. I am going to be chill. No. I don't want to go there. You guys. 
Man, how could you do this to me? Poke. The fuck? Andrew is speaking rapidly and with a sense of urgency. He may be experiencing pressured speech, which can be caused by a few different mental health disorders, including bipolar disorder. It's also possible he's feeling panic due to being constrained, and his rapid speech is an attempt to calm his anxiety. He seems to lack awareness about the seriousness of what landed him in this situation. Yeah, it's this like his brain just like went back to when he was a child. Difficulty with insight could also be the result of a mental health disorder, or it could simply be him failing <clears throat> to take responsibility for his actions. Shortly after, Andrew is administered another sedative. He will soon be cleared for release and taken to his next destination. Yeah, this bipolar mania is kind of, I mean, insane. With this is saying he's cleared to go to jail. We're gonna do a blood draw here in a second, boss. I understand, but do they have to be this tight? Oh, it hurt bad, dude. Been through a lot for everybody. You guys don't know. You guys don't know what I've been through these past few days. Andrew will soon explain exactly what happened over those past few days, Being or chilling. at least his perception of what happened. You won't believe the bizarre story he has to tell. Go negative image. Chill. Okay, he didn't. Uh, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah, you should have went negative with that image. It would add to the scare. Let's go. Okay. Come on. Andrew is released from the hospital. What's with you and bald thumbnails? It's more of me and I'm too lazy to make it a thumbnail for every single stream. So I'm just using the same one every single time. Transported to Lincoln County Detention Center. It's the following day, April 3rd, when the undersheriff and another member of the sheriff's office sit down with Andrew to get his rendition of the events that led to this very meeting. One of the most disturbing elements you'll see is that he seems to genuinely believe the psychotic delusions are real. I know it's not me, sure, and I don't know what to do. It's scaring me bad. Because everybody just seemed like they were going to hurt me or something like that, you know? And this is the very definition of a delusion. The person with them does believe it is real. Someone experiencing a delusion cannot distinguish between what is reality and what isn't. One common type of delusion is known. Yeah, that's actually true. We usually assume that most people with bipolar who end up killing themselves do it because of the extreme depressive episode, but it actually occurs during mania because they think they're invincible. Yeah, I've heard of like people who have like a manic episode jumping off of buildings thinking they could fly and stuff like that. It's crazy. <clears throat> As a persecutory delusion where a person may believe that someone else is out to get them or is spying on them, Isn't which could lead to paranoid or paranoia? violent behavior. These kinds of delusions may occur due to a psychological disorder such as schizophrenia, or they could be the result of substance abuse. The following footage from Andrew's interrogation is utterly chilling. The undersheriff starts the interrogation black and white. Okay. by inquiring about Andrew's personal life. Right away, the undersheriff begins to build rapport. So this is the first time that I've met you. Yeah. Well, what's, what's your full name? Andrew P. McGill. Where do you work? I don't work. I go to school right now. I'm a student at E&M UR. Oh. Aviation business. Tell me a little bit more about you. Okay. Are, you are you married or? Yeah. Any kids? Yeah, one, oh, he's five. married and has a kid? Soon, the oh, undersheriff God. Sheriff changes course and refocuses the conversation on recent events that have taken place. Namely, his alarming breakdown, the attack and shooting at the hospital, and an utterly horrific crime he will soon describe. So tell me what's been going on in your life recently. Uh, how, did, how did you end up in here talking to me? I had no idea. I've been having a weird week. I can't remember. It's like I can't remember anything. Yeah, Chad, it's times like have, these, I'm thankful that I have control of my own brain, dude. <clears throat> yeah, dude. Yeah. What kind of drugs? What's the thing? Kind of drugs. Like, I use meth, heroin, cocaine, marijuana. Well, that's not How a good combination. Using drugs. For most of my life, since I was like 15. Holy shit, that Those explains a lot. Meth. Meth. It's a possibility that use of drugs could explain Andrew's strange behavior. Methamphetamine has been associated with violent behavior. 
It can also trigger psychotic symptoms like hallucinations and delusions in as many as 40% of users. Of course, quite an array of other substances could also cause the type of behavior Andrew has been exhibiting. When's the last time that you saw your wife in the dark? What do you remember about that? I remember they were scared of me and I remember... I told you guys about the time where my friends tried to trick me to do meth when I was younger, right? That was cool. I remember I was scared of them and they were just leaving me behind. Methamphetamine use can also trigger the user to experience tap paranoia. Tap a tug. That, in combination with hallucinations and delusions, could be one explanation as to why Andrew might have been afraid of his Yo, wife and daughter. Yo, thank you so much for being here. Notice that Andrew is shifting around a lot, leaning forward, leaning back, moving his feet, as well as frequently looking away from the detectives. Normally, someone might see these behaviors as signs of anxiety or dishonesty. But since we know that he has a history of both drug use and hallucinations, this doesn't necessarily mean he's lying or is trying to hide something. I know, but I don't remember what I did, and it's like, why? I don't understand it at all, sir. With this admission, officers trained in interrogation methods should know to tread carefully and avoid any of the normal attempts to suggest reasons for why the crime was committed. He may be highly suggestible, and there is the chance of implanting false memories. The read technique advises against using these steps any time there is a potential mm. memory impairment. Interesting. Something bad happened in your life in the last yeah, few weeks? Or? This might sound ridiculous and crazy. It probably is ridiculous and crazy, but it's the choice. And I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, psychology is wild, crazy. dude. Yeah. Dude, it may sound strange, but it's how you feel. Right. Yeah. Just tell me whatever. It's fine. Yeah, well, I was just sitting at home one night with my brother, and my twin brother, Philip, was sitting in the house. We started talking, and then all this weird stuff started happening to me. So I felt like something was after me, like something was really going to hurt me. I was no, not much off at all. And something's telling me that I need to go to read. I was hoping everybody's freaking out around me, and I don't know what the heck is going on right now. I just need to get out of town. This sounds like Andrew may be describing a persecutory delusion, as mentioned earlier. If Andrew is being truthful about his symptoms, he likely truly believed there was something or someone after him. This is certainly not an excuse for any of his suck. actions, but it could help explain what his mindset was like at the time. As you can see, his body is turned away from the detectives, which could be a sign of deception or signal that he is disengaged in the conversation. However, his body language doesn't appear to match his behavior. He's being cooperative with detectives so far and answering the questions openly. This is another example of why you can't rely on a single deceptive cue, such as lack of frontal alignment, to accurately determine if someone is telling the truth or not. Yeah, that would really Most suck if that's actually the case, if like his mind made him do something terrible that he can't control. American psycho will display a mix of deceptive and truthful indicators. So detectives will be taking note to see which type of behaviors they see most often. Andrew got into his truck and began driving, radio blaring, trying to get away from the mysterious evil he believed was following him. I could hear my dad talking to me saying, it'll be okay, son. Just listen to what I'm going to tell you, you're going to be okay. But then he presented to my dad just as Andrew stated before, he wasn't himself. He explained that he started doing things that he didn't want to do. I'm a normal human being. It just happened to me the other night when I was asleep. And I just woke up out of nowhere. I started writing all this stuff down. The Bible is a lie. Suddenly, he pulled the Bible over and abandoned is a lie. his running truck oh, on no. the side of the highway. Still trying to get away from whatever he imagined was following him, he ran for the mountains nearby. Dude, I've, I've, this sounds pretty normal for a manic episode, like that extreme paranoia where you think someone's out to get you when they're not. Like that, I've heard of this plenty of Just times. Just around this people. time, as fate would have it, Andrew crossed paths with someone else. And then I went up to this old lady's house and she's like, well, why are you here? What? Marianne Morehouse, caretaker of the co Ranch, oh, had been on the phone with a friend that evening. During the course of the conversation, she mentioned that someone was on the property and that she was going to investigate. According to her friend, the call then ended abruptly. 
When all of his calls to Marianne went unanswered, he became extremely concerned, so much so that he contacted local police and asked they head to the property and perform a welfare check on Marianne. She turned back to me all these weird questions. I thought she was after me again because I felt like she was getting possessed by something and dark entity all the time, back and forth, back and forth. Like, and then I would talk to her and then she'd snap out of it. And then she'd go back to being weird again. And I was like, man, what is going on right now? Maybe if I just end her life, this will be over with. Andrew continues his account of what he alleges happened. Very normal thought process, you know. That evening, very normal. Outlandish as it seems, we already know that at least part of it is true. So I went back and I punched her in the head. She got knocked out. Ah, this is a long story. That's fun. We're all day now. Andrew claims that his brother Philip was talking to him at this time, pleading with Andrew not to cut his head off. I felt like maybe he was the possession in my life and I needed to end him, but I couldn't find him anywhere, so I just had to end this lady life that was possessed. What Andrew states next is absolutely chilling. So is it finally happening? I chopped her head off with an axe. And I had to chop this lady's head off with an axe. I bomb her to bone like that. Got an axe? Took. What kind of medications do you take? I don't take Water. anything. No, but you no. guys think I'm crazy, man. That was exactly what the... I mean, yeah, you did chop a lady's head off. <clears throat> I don't know how else you'd describe that. Anybody got chills? That's what we've been waiting for this whole time, chat. Did you guys get chills? I mean, I see no other solution. She keeps going back and forth and back and forth. You got a point. She does keep going back and forth. Deputies encountered at the ranch. Hey, 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 hey. Down. We got somebody down. We got somebody down. Right there. Axe. There's an axe. This. Send more than that. It's a homicide. Additional units. Let's back up. The scene was grislier than anyone could imagine. There's an axe laying next to her and she got, she got it in the head. Get some SP out here. Oh, God. We're going to need additional assistance. It's going to be a, a homicide. That's one thing <clears throat> about cops that I give them credit for is dealing with uh, death and like grotesque homicides and murders and stuff like that. A blood coated axe had been set down close to where Marianne lay. Her head was almost entirely severed from her body. One particular laceration appeared to extend at least half of the depth of her head. Her mm. body was completely covered in blood and it was later determined that she was struck with the axe four times. Do, do you think that you were, that, that your presence were scared of her? No, not at all. When, when do you even think that? Because I was being polite and honest, you know, well accepted. Except for the fact every now and then she'd look at me like all crazy, like, wait, what is that? You know, mm -hmm. just freaking me out. Okay. So you were being polite with her and wondering. So anytime you... someone freaks you out, just chop their head off. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's reasonable. That's mm -hmm. reasonable. Because they just wanted to mouth I was scared. And, but to see she, people who have just people done the most heinous crime the because of the suspect is in the signs of physical the damage, they have to bring them in for, I think oh, you got God. I by the guy, uh, and that's when I started being scared, so I had to do something. Like, I know it's like one of those things, you know, cops and, uh, you know, people who work in the ER, like, you get desensitized to gore, basically, after a while. I mean, that's got to be tough. I punched your rock <laughs> up first before I did anything with that. The detective is doing a good job of coming across as non-judgmental and non-confrontational, given the horrific nature of the crime. This likely is making it easier for Andrew to open up because he doesn't feel judged. If the detective was more aggressive in his approach, this could either prompt Andrew to have an outburst or it could cause him to shut down. In his version, it was the devil's doing, not Andrew's. The devil was attacking me, and I had to fight him off, and I had to kill somebody to get rid of him. I am the real son of God, and this is why I have that tattoo on me, and I hate evil. I was trying to get rid of it out of this earth, and I am the son of oh, God. Man. Trust me. I love you guys. I am on your side. I am good. And I would have never done that ever in my life. Mm -hmm. I feel so bad to that old lady. Really bad. Do you feel bad because you know that that was wrong? Or? Yeah, I know for sure that that was wrong. 
But I couldn't stop him, man. I was like, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't be myself. And I'm still not myself. I don't know what it is. Although Andrew don't says do that he feels kids. bad, his it's level like it's a of emotion more than doesn't just match mess. the severity of what he did. In his mind, he may be justifying his behavior because he felt like he couldn't control himself. It's possible that he sees himself as a victim to his own mind. I mean, that's therefore struggling that to take full right. responsibility for what he did. So in the, He's in the Jesus. Day, because I started becoming mature, and it just all this knowledge just started coming to my head, and I was like, "Holy cow, what is going on?" I even called my mom. I was like, "Mom, there's something wrong with me." I was like, "I need some help, mom." Chat. So, what if he is Jesus, and this was a test, and well, what what's like the saying? Like if Jesus came to Earth, like no one would care or some shit. Like like no one would, you know, give a shit. Maybe he's actually Jesus, guys. Or were you using brain? Uh, I mean, no, 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 I wasn't no. using any drugs. No. It's possible that Andrew was being honest, and he wasn't actually under the influence of meth at the time of the murder. Interestingly, psychosis that was initially triggered by meth use can be a long-lasting issue. Even if the person abstains from drug use in the future, psychotic symptoms may return, often triggered by stress. However, the exact onset of his symptoms is unknown. It's possible that his hallucinations and delusions oh, Jesus, first yeah, happened when he was using drugs, while, yeah. or they may have been the result of a psychological disorder such as schizophrenia. I mean, I feel like my head is a little bit thinking, and it's like no matter what kind of drug anybody gives me or anything, I just can't quit thinking. And it leads me to bad thinking. It's not me. I'm just scared of my own self. I'm scared of everybody. And I just want everybody to love each other and be happy. There seems to be a contradiction here. Andrew states Yeah, I'd he say so because he, you, you killed a lady by hitting her in the head with an axe four times. I just want everyone to love everybody. Using any you know? drugs, but admits he uses drugs <sighs> in an effort to calm terrible thoughts he claims to have. The conversation then shifts to the shooting that took place at the hospital. And then at the hospital, I shot some guy in the elbow, and I don't know why I did that. I was scared still. I just didn't know what I was doing at all. It's like, what? I felt like this is my life. And it's like scary. His story isn't making sense, despite the fact that he has admitted to savagely killing Marianne and shooting the deputy at the hospital. As they continue their efforts to gain some clarity on what really happened that night, they move to the subject of Andrew's trek to the police station. Do you, do you remember going to the Downs TV? Do you remember talking to, yeah. getting a ride into town? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay, I was walking down the street. After all that bad stuff happened with the old lady, after that was done, I was running down the street, and then, and then some guy... Just pulled over out of nowhere and was like, hey, man, do you need a ride? And I told him, yeah. An officer caught up with the good Samaritan who'd offered Andrew a ride moments after he'd parted ways with him. Are you the one that dropped him off? Dude, that guy's fucking lucky, man. And this is why I never answer the door to strangers and I never pick up strangers. Like, yeah, the whole you need to be a good Samaritan and stuff, but... The chance that one of them happens to be a dude who just murdered a lady with an axe, it's up there, man. Yeah, I dropped him off here. Last time I saw him, like, in the parking lot down there. Okay, where'd you find him at? Um, about 10 miles down the road. He was walking across the road, dude, in the middle of the road. How yeah. lucky do you have to feel being that guy? He's never going to pick up anyone again. Stops and he was very confused and uh, talking very weird stuff, and uh, I thought I'd give him a ride to the police station up here. I just asked him to get out of the car with me. He, he complied, but he, yeah, he's just acting really crazy. Okay. All right, well, we appreciate you dropping him off. Uh, let's try to figure out what's going on with him. Okay. Next, the undersheriff inquires about something else Andrew said while at the police station the previous night. Do you remember talking to those, to those officers? Because you told them that, that you had hurt somebody else, too. A man. I did? That's what you told them. You said that, that you something about Arthur. Who's Arthur? Oh, I did say that. I'm sick of that guy following me around. His name is Arthur. He goes to my school. He's one of my students. He's had a grudge on me. 
Who's Arthur? I thought he was like the devil or something in my class. It might sound crazy, but this is what I believe in. Okay. This is the point where things take a turn for crazy. We'll get a better and quite disturbing glimpse into his twisted mind. At least, what he claims is going on in his head. And he was out to get me for some reason, trying to... And, like, he had the spring break. Just all coming together in my head weirdly, but that's who it was. That was trying to follow me, I believe, in that. He goes to school with you, though? Yes, sir. But you, you didn't hurt him? No, I didn't. I was wishing I did because I thought he was like the Antichrist or something. I was here to take him out to be put the world in peace again. What the fuck? You know, just Antichrist thought I'd just take him out real quick. Does he think he's like like John Wick but Jesus instead? Weird. Oh I look, it's actually Satan in chat. Holy right. shit. Good I timing. Like he was trying to come out and get me somehow or another. Yeah. And I don't know if it's possible. It could be possible because I've been seeing some weird stuff lately. And I've been experiencing a lot of weird things. So did Arthur go to school with you at e and Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. When's the last time you saw it? Uh, the last day of school before spring break. In our house, pigs catch phrases. This is why I never insert go outside, trust people, or camp. You know what? You're kind of right. Am I cliche? Am I just a broken record? Do I just say the same shit over and over? I think I do. I don't even know what day it is. Do you guys know what day it is? Yeah, Monday, uh, April 3rd. Andrew continues his theory that he's the son of God and that he's here to save the world. No one through so much pain, suffering today for the whole world. And I forgive all your guys' sins. And the other day I realized that I was God. Hear that, guys? Hear that? Jesus himself said he forgives all of you, so. Jesus? And I was forgiving the world sin. It's called consistency. I, I like that, all right? I didn't know how to do it because I'm not that smart, but I was trying, it was good intent in my heart to change the world. And I think I might have accomplished that. And if you guys are understanding what I'm saying, it would help me out. But I'm going through a lot right now. His speech continues to be disorganized, but so are his emotions. Notice how rapidly and frequently he switches from calm or normal to scared and crying. All of these emotional shifts appear genuine, but it's not something that is typical. Instead, this might be another sign of his impairment. And I believe that this world is going to be in a peaceful state forever and ever if everybody will accept me. For well, it didn't work, man. The world is not in a peaceful state right now. Yeah. Have you ever had these these issues before, like earlier, like you was a teenager or anything? Never in my life. Never. The story continues to baffle the officers. Then Andrew brings up a new subject, his daughter. I love her. I don't know what she's at, but I just want to go see her. <laughs> she, she's safe. The officers assure Andrew that his little girl is safe in the care of his wife. They want more information about what is frightening Andrew so deeply. Despite his claim that he has conquered over Arthur, the student from his the college, devil. he is still scared of everyone around him. You don't remember hurting anybody else? No. And, you know, the reason I'm asking is because, you know, you told these officers that, that you did these things to the lady. Yo, thank you, Sigaspacho. Thank right. you so much. I bet you also you told them that you did somebody else. I'm just concerned that, that no, 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 that's the person that I need to locate. No. It's a reasonable question, considering Andrew's <clears throat> claim that the undersheriff is referring to. It's a long story, but he possessed my life. He took over my dad's life. He possessed him. He tortured my family. I had to get rid of him. It seems that Andrew believed that Arthur possessed Marianne. So when he says he had to get rid of him. He's likely referring to killing Marianne. The bizarre account continues as Andrew gives some background about the day leading up to the tragic night. And then I stayed up all night on Friday dealing with Phil with my brother, dealing with demons, blah, blah, blah. Man, I think Arthur's a bad guy. Nah. Dude, what, what if, like, <laughs> I just imagine Arthur, like, never speaking to him. Or like even acknowledging him, he just decided that Arthur is the Antichrist. Thank you, French Fried, for becoming a pooper. Do you use drugs? Is it? Do you smoke? I smoke weed. 
And then I'll start to think way differently than anybody ever thought they were thinking about like life. And I had this weird trip when I smoked some marijuana that this life was just a game and a joke and that my dad was up there controlling it. And that I'm Jesus and that we all, it was weird. Dude. Oh my God. Wait, this Overwatch update looks kind of shitty, or is this your monitor resolution? It's just the resolution. But um, <clears throat> this reminds me, because a lot of people don't know that some people can actually, like, trip on marijuana, depending on your, uh, you know, mental uh, state, I guess. Because I remember <clears throat> my friend who was, like, completely sober, you know, all of his teenage life, he started smoking weed, and I remember the first time I, uh, uh, marijuana induced psychosis. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Because this is when he went, like, really downhill. Um, it reminds me of this a lot, actually. Because he, I remember seeing him, or I, I went, it was like at a party, and I went inside the dude's house, and I'm like, hey, uh, where's this guy at? My friend. Like, and they all were looking at me like, dude. You need to calm him down. He's in the garage and he's being weird. And I was like, what? It's like, dude, all he did was smoke weed and he's just been weird. It's usually a catalyst for a pre-existing condition. Yeah. Uh, but I go out there and he literally like, the, I mean, I, I walk in the garage and the whole garage is full of smoke. And like, he's like, dude, like, like, what are we, man? You know what I mean? Like, where do we go? And then he, like, kept, like, looking around, like, like, looking. I thought he was, I genuinely thought he was fucking with me. I kept laughing it off because I thought he was joking. But he's like, dude, like, they're going to get me. And he kept saying that and, like, looking around back and forth. And I was just like, what are you, dude? I, I was j laughing with him at first. But then he just was very serious. Like, dude, stop fucking around. Like, this isn't funny. Like, something's happening. And guess what, guys? After that, he went into meth. He went into heroin. Uh, he ended up uh, stabbing a guy. Uh, and now he's in prison uh, for trying to kill someone. So. You know, like the same situation. The dude was my friend. And then after marijuana, he just lost it. It's crazy. Nah, bro, that's too far. It, it was like, I'm not, he was a, a straight A student, uh, like a very, very nice guy. Like he, he was very nice to everyone. Hilarious dude. Always fun to hang around. Ever since that day, like he just went straight. Like it was, it wasn't even like a gradual downhill. It was like falling off a cliff. It was crazy. I can't get high anymore. It just physically doesn't seem to work. I think my body just noped out. Some people actually can't get high. That's actually a thing. But let the PTA parents hear that story. They'll never let it go. Well, the thing is, if he just stopped, like, it, it would be over. If he just, like, that was his first time smoking weed, and then he's like, you know what? That kind of fucked with me too hard. I need to stop. But his problem is, is that he decided to stop hanging out with friends, for example, like me, and start hanging out with, like, a really bad crowd that just made him go further and further down the rabbit hole of drugs. Andrew insists and the that he hasn't is used crazy. meth in a year and a half, and he didn't smoke marijuana that Friday night. Except, Andrew then claims he had the weird trip that very Friday night, and that they may have possibly smoked a small amount of marijuana after all. He and his brother stayed up all night, and it seems that marked the very beginning of the an night of terror. Video. And then my brother slipped and me started talking and we started like telepathic. Yeah, paranoia definitely can be caused by weed. Yeah, weed's not for everyone, guys. Weed's not for everyone. I'll tell you that much. Some people can't do it. We talking to each other and weird stuff. Have you ever, have it, you ever had okay, I'm sorry I keep pausing. But it's weird because with certain mental conditions, weed is good for you. But other mental conditions, weed is bad for you. And it also it affects everyone differently. You know, like for one person, maybe they have depression, 
weed might actually make that better. Or someone with high anxiety, uh, weed would make that better. Like me, for example, a depression and anxiety that I have, it makes it better. But for some other people, it makes it way worse. It's just the wrong strain, bro. Well, that's bullshit. Because the only difference in strains is like one can make you a little bit more active and the other one makes you a little bit more uh, sleepy. You know, indica and stavia. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, it's kind of case by case, though. Homicidal thoughts before that you never, never, ever, ever in my life, ever. But no meth, no, no heroin, no, no <laughs> pills, no. And then the, the weed that you smoked with your brother. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a strain so matters. Andrew does confirm. I'm not that saying it doesn't marijuana. matter, but it's all such a mystery. It, it doesn't, it doesn't make that seem that anything has difference. been cleared up so not that far as a result of, a of this interview. I, I guess for, for my confusion is, is it might be a lot for you guys. Well, look, I don't know if you believe me or not, but I well, am. I, I believe you. I'm, 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 not, I'm not disputing that. I'm, I'm just trying to understand yeah. how. <laughs> Me too. I don't know how we we take and, and do a you know violently kill yeah, an elderly lady. I know that's the thing. That's the trip that I don't want to even think of. The detective is gently probing Andrew for more information and pointing out the holes in his story. Framing it as his own difficulty to understand likely makes it easier for Andrew to accept. If the detective had directly confronted Andrew, raised his voice or gotten into his personal space, this could have triggered Andrew to feel threatened, and he may have reacted violently. In addition to having previously established that he knew it was, in fact, wrong to kill Marianne, Andrew also confirms that he was aware that he'd shot a member of law enforcement during his short stay at the hospital. His rationale for this was that he thought they were trying to kill him with the medication he was being administered. Did you, did you think that you were going to get in trouble? Oh yeah. Somebody found out and now we're gonna get in trouble, yeah. There's no doubt. I mean I would life. imagine. And I probably should be in trouble, but at the same time I felt like I'd conquered over something. So what 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 do you think should should happen to somebody who does this thing? This is known as the punishment question and is taught in the read technique. Usually when someone's being truthful, they will respond with a punishment that fits the crime. Detectives may use this question, among others, to gauge a suspect's honesty. In this case, the detectives already know that Andrew is responsible for the murder, and he has confessed, so they may be trying to find out answers to other questions, like, does he fully understand the consequences of his actions? Did he know at the time that what he was doing was wrong? They should be punished at the same time. They should be understood from a personal level. And maybe have some evidence on their life to show them. Maybe have my evidence from my life and my experience be shown to you guys so you could understand who I am and where I'm coming from and what happened to me that day, you know? And maybe that might help us all out. It truly seems like Andrew doesn't comprehend the magnitude of the situation, nor does he really seem to show remorse for the terrible crimes he's committed. So even though you feel like you're here to, to save the world, uh, but do you still think, obviously you don't think people should get away with murder, right? No, no. But I felt like I, I would have never done this ever in a million years, ever. But I felt like somebody, somewhere, something good was telling me to do it, so I had to do it. And it might sound odd and crazy and belligerent or whatever you want to say about it, but it's the truth. Is there any, any possibility that uh, yeah, with marijuana that you got that was nice or something? No. No way. <clears throat> the interview is approaching its conclusion. The undersheriff asks one final time if there's anything else Andrew needs to make them aware of. I told you everything that happened. And this has only happened to me this past week. Other than that, my life is normal as normal can be. Like, I just go to school every day and clock in, clock in. No question about it. Andrew's previously normal life will never be the same. Yeah, that is crazy, dude. He does just look like a normal guy. After the guy. senseless acts of violence he just inflicted upon two innocent individuals. 
This is the crazy part. I just kept on getting all these weird instincts to do stuff that I've never done in my life that I would have never even thought of doing. And it was like crazy, man. I think you like evaluated or something. I think you may still judge. Okay, cool. You know, actually, uh, I need to get like evaluated out because I'm not right right now. Because I realized all these things I've done are really wrong, but at the same time I had these instincts to do them, and I felt like I accomplished something. It's unusual that Andrew shows this level of insight into his behavior. If he's able to think this clearly about himself and recognizes that an evaluation is in his own best interest, it's surprising. Yeah, we, we should get the why did you do it, Steven detective to come in here and just absolutely break him down piece by piece. If he just continually asks him, why did you do it? His entire life will just fall before that detective that he hasn't exhibited any genuine remorse for what he did. He appears to be focused entirely on himself. Why this lack of it? empathy could be an Why indication of antisocial traits. The interview comes to a close, but the painstaking process of determining what has been going on in Andrew's mind has just begun. He's clearly in need of the evaluation he just referenced, and quite obviously, that's just the tip of the iceberg. A forensic psychiatrist hired by the state handled Andrew's evaluations for the hefty price of $100,000. He reached the conclusion that Andrew was cognizant at the time he carried out the murder, as well as a few hours later when he shot the deputy during his short stay at the hospital. The psychiatrist cited a drug-induced psychosis as the inspiration behind the horrendous spree. The drug test conducted while Andrew was at the hospital showed only marijuana in his system. It should be noted, however, that conventional drug tests are unable to detect synthetic cannabinoids, which can cause altered perception. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it was synthetic cannabis, because that shit's wild. That shit's worse than meth. That shit's crazy. Andrew pleaded That's guilty like to multiple assault, charges, basically. including second-degree murder and assault with intent to commit a felony upon a peace officer. On September 6th, 2019... For fuck's sake, this is why everyone blames weed, I know, right? Andrew he probably was sentenced did spice? to 45 yeah, probably. years in prison. Wait, what is that? Uh, it was called K2, where I'm from. It was legal for, like, a few months... You could literally go to a gas station and buy synthetic weed. And, you know, people call it Spice. People call it K2 uh, or Special K, other shit like that. Or wait, is Special K something else? Whatever. Um, but yeah, it's like a really aggressive weed that, like, can fuck you up. It, I would say it's kind of like bath salts. Like, it's crazy. I was legal for years? Special K is cereal. Well, no shit, it's cereal. Ketamine, that's what Special K is, yeah. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way. You. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.